Hello everyone! I hope you're ready for another adventure, because today, Wayne reads, Tell Me a Mitzi. Always remember that as we go through these amazing stories and read these outstanding adventures, all you have to do is press the CC button in your YouTube link in order to follow along with the words. Now I think that North Star will be perfect to join us for today's adventure. Now that North Star's here, let's go ahead and jump on it. Tell me a Mitzi. Mitzi and the President. Play with me, Martha said to her father. I'm reading, said her father. I'm hungry, said Martha. Martha's father put down his book, got up and made Martha a piece of bread and butter and sat down and picked up his book. And thirsty, said Martha. Martha's father put down his book, got up and brought Martha a glass of milk and sat down to pick up his book. And Martha said, tell me a Mitzi. Once upon a time, said father, there was a father and he had a little girl called Mitzi and she had a brother called Jacob, and they went for a walk. Mitzi said, I'm hungry for some gum, and Jacob said, me too, and their father said, I don't have any. Well, I want some, said Mitzi. Me too, said Jacob, and I want a parade. Well, I don't have one, said his father. Look in your pocket, said Mitzi. Mitzi's father looked in his left pocket, and then in his right pocket, and in his breast pocket, and in his two trouser pockets, and said, no, nothing. Besides, it's almost lunchtime and Jacob always swallows his. Anyhow, I don't like gum-chewing children. Also, the sugar is bad for your teeth, and when that's gone, you don't want to chew it anymore. You don't even like chewing gum. Yes, I do, said Mitzi, and so does Jacob. So their father took them to buy chewing gum, but the chewing gum shop was closed. It had a notice, gone to the parade. I want a parade, said Jacob. Me too, yelled Mitzi. Me too, said Mitzi's father. There were a lot of people running, and Mitzi's father and Mitzi and Jacob ran and there was the first motorcyclist coming past and behind them came two more motorcycles and one on the left and one on the right of the street. They went past and behind them came two more motorcycles side by side. Behind them came a great big open black car, one secret serviceman walking to the left, one to the right. Everyone said, the president. The president was waving to the people on the right and to the people on the left. And there was two aides, one sitting beside him and one sitting in the back of him as they drove past. Now behind them came two more motorcycles side by side and two more motorcycles and then one right and then one left side of the street and then the last motorcycle all by himself. When he had gone past, Jacob said, more! All gone, said his father. Lunchtime. More, said Jacob. Don't yell, said his father. There is no more. It's gone. Come back, yelled Jacob. Okay, Jacob, said his father. It's time you learned you cannot always have what you want. Call them back. Go on. Yell. Come back! Jacob yelled so loudly that the president turned his head. The president spoke to his aide at his side and touched the shoulder of the driver in front, who stopped the car. The two secret servicemen stopped. The motorcycle's back stopped. The secret servicemen ran forward to stop the motorcyclists in front, who hadn't noticed that everyone else had stopped. The president got out of his car, and so did the two aides, and they came walking over. Did you call me? asked the president. He did, said Mitzi. He's my brother. His name is Jacob. Jacob, eh? said the president. And what's your name? Mitzi, said Mitzi. Mitzi, is it? said the president. Mitzi said, and this is daddy. So how do you do? said Mitzi's father. Very well, thank you, came the president. Were you calling me, Jacob? He meant the president, Mitzi said. He wants us to come back. He likes parades and things. Likes parades, does he? said the president. Is there any reason? The president asked the two aides why we should be going in the direction rather than this direction. One moment, sir, said one of the aides, and he ran over to talk to the two secret servicemen, and then he ran back. No reason, sir, why we shouldn't be going in either direction. Very well, then, I suppose, the president said. You like chewing gum, do you? Yes, please, said Mitzi, and so does Jacob. The president looked in his five pockets. Do either of you happen to have chewing gum on you? He asked the two aides. The two aides looked in their ten pockets. The secret service looked in their ten pockets. The motorcyclists looked in their fifty pockets. All the people on the sidewalks looked in their pockets. Fantastic, sir, said one of the aides. Seventy-five pockets in the president's party alone, and no gum. Chewing gum, sir, someone yelled. The driver of the presidential's car found a piece of gum in his left trouser pocket and handed it to the right secret serviceman, who handed it to the left two aides, who handed it to the president, who broke it in half and gave one piece to Mitzi and the other piece to Jacob. Say thank you, Jacob, said Mitzi. Well, said the president, I won't say goodbye. See you when I drive past again. And he and the two aides walked back to the president's car and got in. The first motorcyclist made a U-turn, followed by the two motorcyclists on either side of the street. 
followed by the two motorcyclists side by side, followed by the president's car. Goodbye, called the president, and he waved as he drove by. Goodbye, called Mitzi. Goodbye, yelled Jacob, and Mitzi and Jacob and their father waved at the president, and the two waves, and to the right and to the left Secret Service man, and to the two motorcycles side by side, and to the motorcycle on the right side of the street, and to the one on the left side, and the last motorcyclist riding by himself when he passed, Jacob said, all gone. Well, that was a really fun adventure with Mitzi Jacob meeting the president. What did you think, North Star? That was really cool. We'll see you on the next adventure, okay? And we'll see you on the next adventure, here with Wayne Reeves. Thank you for joining us, and we can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye!